So finally, after many requests, I'm going to bring you my revamped 352. This tactic is absolutely incredible. It scored over 230 goals across in a season. And trust me, it's an absolute banger. If you do enjoy the tactics on this channel, be sure to smash the like button, subscribe, and turn on the little notification bell. We are currently only 70. That is right, 70 subs away from the big 10K. So we're going to kick things off with one of the smaller teams of today's test, and we are going to have four teams tested with today. As always, when there is a generic tactic not based around a manager, I always test with a mixture of elite teams, middle table teams, and also, obviously, fodder teams, as you probably describe them as. The first team is going to be Sunderland, obviously, over in Skybet Championship, and we have come out and put on an absolute clinic here, actually winning the championship very convincingly. I'm also winning the Carabao Cup against Manchester City, and it is quite funny because we also tested with Man City, as you can see up here, obviously more than one team loaded, so we sort of beat ourselves. So that just shows how, obviously, the tactic performs against the better teams as well. Um, so very interesting to see like that. Not the best display in the FA Cup, but to be honest, when you're winning the championship and the Carabao Cup, you can't really complain. We scored 140 goals in the league, only conceded 36, picked up a fair few bookends, but that is to be expected with a high sort of press and style. In terms of the league table, 117 points do come in compared to Middlesbrough with 104, so the league table wasn't even close. And going over to some of the team stats, we've got a feature in five of those team stats, those being 2.54 points per game, most goals at 140 just in the league alone, by the way. Most shots at 1,036. Fewer shots against at 352. So also quite defensively solid as well. And the fewest conceded coming in at 36. So a really good season for Sunderland in terms of trophies and in terms of the actual league stats. Let's go over some of the data hub as well, as we do have to look at. And that is going to be a very impressive, just over three goals per game margin, coming in at 3.04, conceded at 0.78. So getting on for the one mark, but still a little bit under it. And shots per game over 22, pushing towards 23 shots a game with quite a good pass completion as well. So if I don't say so myself, for a team that are predicted to finish sort of semi-decent, but nowhere near the top in this division, I believe around 10th, it's a great season. And we're going to go over to the powerhouse team next. That is going to be PSG, obviously, over in France. And we enjoyed a treble winning season here within the League One, the French Cup, and the Trophy, the Champion, against FC Nantes. We scored 164, 164 league goals. That is league. Overall in the season, we scored 233. Goals conceded 26 and zero red cards. The league table's absolutely dominant. 111 points coming from us in what I believe wasn't far off an invincible season. One loss there, which is going to be a 2-1 loss away. Um, So nearly an invincible season as well a season which we can't really complain about um in terms of the team stats we're going to feature in five again most points per game most goals at 164 most shots at over 1000 fewer shots at 202 fewest conceded at 26 and also some good possession on this occasion as well, coming in at 61%. Now, this is not designed to be a possession-based tactic, a tiki-taka tactic, but it does just somehow get that aspect of the game ticked off as well. So for anyone that does like to play like that, this sort of does do that for you as well. And going over to the Date Hub, it's going to look incredibly friendly. 4.32 goals per game, conceded at 0.68, nearly 27, 27 shots a game with an 88% pass completion. I can't tell you how incredible that is. The fact that we're re we're pretty much releasing 27 shots a game and having nearly over 60% possession and 88% pass completion that is absolutely fantastic and now we've hit rock bottom we've got a test with harrogate town in skybet league 2 23rd place they have predicted to finish but not when we're managing because they have actually managed to win the skybet league 2 not the best display in the other trophies to be granted and to be honest but that's not really an issue when you've taken a team that are predicted to finish you know all the way down here where tranmere finished and we're beating the likes of leighton orient bradford city wimbledon colchester salford some really good teams obviously over in this league a really good season, scoring 100 goals and conceding only 25. And in terms of the team stats, we've got a feature in six on this occasion. Most points per game at 2.43, most goals at 100, fewer shots against at 355. Not bad possession either, by the way, sitting at 59%. Most shots at over 850, most clean sheets at 26, and the fewest conceded coming in at a very, very all-time low, which is a good thing, is going to be at 25. Now, Going over to the data hub, you can see here it says we're performing well above the average, which is always good to see. But to actually give you some stats, 
2.17 goals per game, conceded at 0.54, so actually the best defensive display we put on the entire test and phase. Roughly about 18 shots a game, 18.5, whatever you want to say, and a pass completion of basically 85%. So obviously not as many goals scored better defensively. I'm going to put that down to a mixture of worst teams that we're playing, obviously, in this division. And I don't really find it too hard to play in this division, to be honest with you, even with a slightly lower down team. Not as many goals, but that is to be expected as well, because we don't have the, the influence of, you know, like a Neymar and Mbappe, etc, etc. But overall, a really good season over in England. And now we're going to go on to the last tactic test. And that is going to be with the blue side of Manchester, Manchester City. And I managed to win the quadruple. Forget their treble. I nearly won five trophies, but we won four on this occasion. Be in the Champions League against Bayern Munich, which they ticked off this season. The Premier League, obviously, they ticked off. We also won the FA Cup against United and also the Community Shield coming in against Liverpool. Unfortunately, we would have won five trophies in that season, but the other team we tested with being Sunderland sort of ruined that for us. But at least we won with Sunderland as well. So four trophies in one season, 120 league goals, 17 conceded, ranking as best in both categories. Only the one red card across the entire season. The league table, kind of close, not too much. Liverpool put up a bit of a fight, then a really big drop off for a lot of the other big teams. In terms of the team stats, though, we're going to feature in six again. Possession again, 57%, fairly average, but it's kind of decent. Most points per game at 2.68, most goals at 120, just in the league alone. Fewer shots at 229, most shots at 872, fewest conceded at 17, and the most clean sheets coming in at 24. Going over to the data hub, then we're going to be averaging just over three goals a game, 3.16, conceded at 0.45, a very impressive stat line for the Premier Division, and a pass completion at an all-time high out of all of the teams, I believe, at 88 0.17, which is really, really impressive, alongside of roughly around 23 shots a game. I just have a little look at some of the finals that we play with Man City, and to be honest, a lot of them were two ones, one nils, nothing too exciting. So we're going to watch this game to start with, which is going to have just a load of goals so we can see exactly how these chances do get buried. As you can see, I'm absolute ping from Gomez and Kyle Walker finding himself in the box, which we are going to see a lot because fullbacks, or not fullbacks, sorry, but the um, he obviously was playing in one of those sort of centre-back roles that are going to be pushed up quite highly as De Bruyne fizzes it across into Erling Haaland, two players that should be illegal then playing on the same team together. Absolute dream partnership right there. Adding Phil Foden to the mix and it's unplayable as John Stones gets up into Erling Haaland. It's a decent first save, but Castagna with a dodgy clearance and it is going to be a very, very costly clearance as we pick up the third goal of the game as Erling Haaland gets a little deflection from Thayer's. A poor clearance as Gomez picks it up who drives down the left-hand side. He's going to cut it back into Phil Foden and that is absolutely incredible play down the left-hand side. You're seeing how influential these wide areas actually are in this system. As Diaz now plays it into De Bruyne, a wonder ball over the top first time into Phil Foden, touches it down, drives it across. Could the keeper have done better? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe let me know in the comments. But overall, a fantastic first 40 minutes of this game. As another goal is going to come in, shock and mark, and you can never leave anyone, let alone Erling Brut Haaland at the back stick. As we play in some really good link-up play, here. Very good short pass and as Foden eventually decides to go long into Julian Alvarez with a wonder touch. The keeper just, I don't know what happened there. The keeper just come running at Alvarez and sort of made a decision up for him. As now Gomez puts the ball into the box, into Erling Haaland. You are really seeing the set piece potential from this tactic as well. As we're now going to see the last goal coming in from Gomez who goes alone and tucks it in to the right corner. And let's watch another game with some goals, shall we? Why not? One more game. That is going to be Sunderland this time. Obviously finding themselves in the chance championship, which now they're now in the Premier League, obviously, in this game, thanks to our fantastic tactic, as Geldhart obviously has a fantastic first touch with him, and an even better finish to open the goal score and up in inside of like nine minutes, by the way. Absolutely incredible, as he picks up the ball again here, link up play out wide, he's going to take a touch here, drive it back across, a great give and go, gets into the box literally within seconds, and it's great link up play between the striker and obviously the fullback there. Absolutely incredible stuff. Alise now, Back to Sirkin. Again, he plays it over the top into Geldhart. Takes a little touch through one-on-one. -on -one. This man here cannot put a foot wrong in this Sunderland team. And we are absolutely flying off at the races now. As Hume picks up the ball here, he's going to drive it across into Geldhart. I thought he's going to overhead kick that. He's going to play it back in the middle into Neil, into Ahmad, into Stewart. It's a bit of a scrappy one. A bit of a scrappy one. But nevertheless, a fantastic game for a fantastic team thus far. 
Elise back into Amad. Going to play the ball across now into Sirkin. He's going to take a touch, drive it across into Stewart, back stick in a fantastic 5 0 win. So, guys, we are now going to break down a tactic for you, but if you are enjoying today's video, please do leave a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and share the video around. We're currently only 70 subs away from hitting the big 10K, an absolute dream of mine since I started this channel. So, if you do want to help out, feel free to do so. But let's go ahead and talk tactics. So this is going to be the perfect 352. It's an updated variant pretty much on my ultimate 352, which has been requested many, many a times. And today we are going to be bringing you a slightly updated version. And in my opinion, it performs a lot, lot better on this current match engine. I do want to quickly thank all of the names coming down the screen right now. These are going to be either existing or new Patreon members. If you are interested in joining the Patreon team, you can click the link in the description. This is a great way to support me as a creator and also get some pretty cool perks for yourselves, including early video release, early tactic release also access to all three of these tactic files priority in the tactic and rebuild requests 101 tactic help and also exclusive access to the giveaways which are going to include a couple of copies of next year's fm and possibly even possibly a little cheeky copy of the new f1 so definitely something to check out and get involved in because there's going to be a lot of stuff going on there and working day in day out to offer more back so obviously just to give back to you guys, because at the end of the day, if you're supporting me, it means the absolute world to me. Honestly, mental to even think that. But do you know what? Let's go ahead and break down this tactic. So it's going to still be around a 3-5-2. Now, I know I can already see some of the comments. That's a five at the back. And to be honest, you can also word it like that as well. But you can see, you know, the three and then the five. So you can see it as obviously that, or you can see it as a 5 3 two. However you want to see it. I'm personally going to title it a 3-5-2. The last 3-5-2 I had, I had all of these centralized. And I think it works a little bit better having one a little bit deeper. So that is why we've gone with that. But it's going to be based around the custom, obviously the press and style, quite a popular style to use in this game. A positive mentality in possession. We've got fairly wide overlap left, overlap right. I can't stress how important the fullbacks are in this system. Playing out from the back is a key part of it as well. Shorter passing directness, a higher tempo, mixed crosses, hit early crosses, and also shoot on sight. So a lot different to the previous one and also be more expressive. In transition, you want counter pressing and counter distributing to the center backs. Obviously the fullbacks is a bit of a gamble because they could be too far pushed up. So I like to play to anyone across that back three. While doing this, we also opt for taking short goal kicks. Out of possession, we've got the standard, the standard, the higher defensive line, sorry, the high pressing line of engagement, much more often prevent short goalkeeper distribution and also get stuck in. This is something you can take off. It will remove a certain aggressive element of the dam of the sort of tactic and the game. Might mean you're not going to get as involved all the time, but if you are picking up too many bookends, that's what you want to be tweaking. Going over to the player roles, we're going to have a sweeper keeper on attack on the default instructions. A ball playing defender on the right on stay wider. A central defender on defend on the default in the middle. On the left, another ball playing defender on defend on stay wider. And that is going to be your back three, one, two, three. Nice and easy. Now, two wing backs on the left. We're going to have a wing back on attack. He is going to be on cross more often. Cross aim center, dribble more and also stay wider. And it's going to be exactly the same for the full backs. Now, I really can't stress this enough. If you can, please do try and stick with these exact instructions because they performed really, really well as we saw Walker getting involved, you know, and also Gomez playing massive roles in the system. If your players are comfortable like this, I would recommend sticking with this if you can because they are very, very influential players and roles within this system. Going over to the midfield, the deeper player is going to be a deep line playmaker. The sort of pivot in the middle, he's just going to ping balls out wide, maybe go more direct here and there. And he's going to be a deep line playmaker on defend, on pass it shorter, and tackle harder. Now, although I've just said pass it shorter, that doesn't always mean he's not going to have a little bit of risk element in him. We saw that in the highlights. I personally had it on him because sometimes they get a little bit over the top carried away and they just do useless passes in behind. And that is something I've recently started to like a lot putting on a deep line playmaker because they still have that long ball approach, but just a little bit more, a little bit more under control. And then we have two Metzalas, very unique, but a very different way that I've not really used to playing with. And I really liked how it worked. We didn't concede too many. Um, Obviously, we still obviously have got a deep line playmaker on defend to obviously do defensive work and free centre back. So that probably explains why. But the, re the left side of Metzala, sorry, is going to be on dribble more and tackle harder on attack. And it's going to be exactly the same on the right hand side. And then the cherry on top or two cherries on top, the advanced forward on the right on attack is going to be on dribble more 
and shoot more often. And on the left hand side, it's going to be exactly the same. So you're going to have two very goal hungry strikers, which is going to result in goals, goals, and even more goals. You've got two fantastic creative players to obviously facilitate their needs. Is that, you know, create chances, etc. You've got two fullbacks that essentially act as wingers. You've got one man to feed pretty much the entire team. And you've also got a very strong back line here. So it works really, really well. It's a nice balance of the team. Yes, a few things can be tweaked. For example, you could have a deep line forward up here if you wanted to, something like that. But for me, this is the best 352 to date that I have personally made that works on this match engine. Going over to what is going to be the attacking variant, not too many changes because it's already quite attacking. So I'm not going to waste your time too much because the deep line playmaker is the only change in this team. He actually goes to a supportive role, still on the same instructions, but just a tiny bit more pushed up. Everyone else remains the same because they are already very attacker minded. However, and I do want to say this before we do carry on talking about the attack and variant. This one is strictly designed for use during a game. I wouldn't recommend going into a game like this. This is purely to use to chase a game that you're desperate for a goal in because it is quite hard to make a very attacking tactic even more attacking. But I have done it, but this is strictly for use during a game. So you want to have the mentality set to attacking in possession. We've obviously opted to have the tempo completely maxed out. We've added the run at defense element as well. And we have really gone all out guns blazing. In transition, we're obviously going to have distribute quickly on if you are going to be chasing the game, really wanting to get back under play. And out of possession, we've got the much higher defensive line. So you are going to be vulnerable at the back. But again, if you are desperate, and I mean desperate for a goal, this is 100% going to get you that goal you need because it is so attacking, the other team will just absolutely crumble. And then we're going to quickly look at the defensive variant. So again, a little refresher. This is a normal one. And now the defensive one is going to look like this. So quite a few changes. So here we go. So the first change is going to come pretty much with the fullbacks. They're going to be on the same instructions, but both of them are going to be on now on a supportive, a supportive, a supportive role and not on an attack and roll. The big change is going to be the DM coming in instead of a deep blind playmaker. When we play in this defensive style, now this is one I do believe you could go in against big teams and actually play like this and try and annoy them. This is now more possession based, more sort of hold on to the ball when you've got it. So you are going to see a lot more passing at shorter when it is on. And that is going to be a DM on defend on pass at shorter and also tackle harder. A box to box on support on take fewer risks, dribble less, shoot less often and also tackle harder. And a central midfielder on support on pass at shorter, take fewer risks, dribble less, run from position and also tackle harder. So effectively, we've got very, we've got three very disciplined midfield players that are all going to pass it between them very nicely, not do anything too crazy and just hold on to the ball and run the clock down. In terms of the mentality, we've got balanced in possession. We've actually gone with the, well, the time waste and it's pretty much, it says what it is. It's frequently, you're trying to run the clock down, so it's completely maxed out. We've not got the overlap left and the overlap right on. We're still playing out from the back. We've still got the hit early crosses and the shoot on sight mentality. Just in case we do get a little cheeky shot on goal, you never know what can happen. Going over to the transition tab, we've got slow pace down. We've still got the counter press on, so you still want a little bit of pressure to win that ball back. And obviously, we still do want to counter attack if we can, because we don't just want to sit there and just sort of, you know, invite too much pressure when we've got the ball. So this is a really good way of playing. And out of possession, we've got the standard line, so a lot more defensively structured, a lot more solid. You can see it just in the sort of this map alone. And we've still got the high press and line and still maxed out on the trigger press. But that is going to be free very, very good 3-5-2 tactics for you guys to use. Obviously, all a little bit different in their own sort of way. Um, all of the testing, apart from if I play the finals, is done on this one. So if you want to download this one, you can, obviously, from FM Scout. And if you want to download all free, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If you have, please do leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you boys in the next one, which is going to be a cheeky little rebuild.